Thank you very much once again. We welcome you to this discussion of our quarterly lesson. And in the panel and studio, we welcome you together as we continue studying the book of Mark. We want to thank God for your feedbacks and everything and those who have liked our channel. And we continue welcoming you to get blessed together with us. With me in studio today, as we go to the third lesson of this quarter, we have my brother Prince Obuya. Prince, say hi. Karibuni sana. Tutaendelea pamoja. And uh, I am Charles Odoyo. I say welcome. Let us have a prayer from our brother Prince Obuya. Holy Father, we want to thank you for this morning. As we're going to preside this lesson, Lord, let your power always be with us and be with the listeners, Lord. Give thy word the strength that is needed to be propelled unto the nations so that souls may be turned unto you. And at the end, we may receive the kingdom that is everlasting. Meet everyone at that point of need. That's my humble prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. We have been studying the book of Mark and I want to welcome you back and say that let us not forget two things in this lesson. We want to we will stress so much on the divinity and the humanity of Jesus Christ. Number two, we are going to see Jesus of actions. And that is why last week we left at a high point where Jesus was trying to bring home a point that the paralytic the leper should first confirm that he is healed through the priest so that he can go back to start announcing. And we could see the controversy in that and even in the classes and in every other discussion, people were asking why. And on that Sabbath, after that Sabbath had just ended, I see Jesus again coming to another Sabbath. And the week that was ahead of that Sabbath, that was following the Sabbath that he started the ministry. And today we are going to see Jesus now delving deep into the controversies, controversies about his teaching in contrast to the teachings of the Pharisees and the teachers of law and the leaders of the denominations of those days. And today we are going to see five stories in the book of Mark that brings sharp contrast in the school of thinking of the Pharisees and the ideologies that Jesus brought to us. Our memory text is in the book of Mark, chapter 2, verse 27 and 28. Brother Obuya, can you read it? It says, And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Thank you very much. Jesus brings himself in that verse as the son of man, but at the same time he brings himself in that verse as the Lord of the Sabbath. Who created the Sabbath? God himself created the Sabbath, sanctified it, put it aside, and made it holy so that men could enter the Sabbath in its sanctity. And now Jesus comes here as the son of man, and he says that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. And again, he says that Sabbath was made for man. We will see into that as we continue with the lesson. But first of all, we want to see the first controversy that Jesus is meeting. In the book of, in, in book, in the book of Mark chapter 2, verse 1, it says that after a few days, in fact, I said that Jesus ministered on the Sabbath as we finished last week. And now he say after a few days, meaning after the Sabbath, maybe Sunday passed, Monday, and another day there. After a few days, Jesus came back to Capernaum. And the message, the, 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 the message that he was there went to many people. And then people came so that he could heal them. I think you are reading with me, viewer outside there, that people came and then there's a paralytic that was brought to him. So when I analyze this verse, I see the paralysis brought to him so that he could heal him. And Brother Obuya, I want us to delve into this. What was the first reaction when four men came and broke the roof and then lowered the paralytic down right 
the place where Jesus was. What was the reaction of Jesus Christ? We see Jesus Christ, instead of healing, he first talk of your sins are forgiven, of which is a challenge to many people. He challenged many people. I think he saw the faith in this person. Despite the fact that there were many people and uh, uh, it was very difficult for them to get there. Jesus saw them willing to offer everything for the sake of Christ. So first thing we see there is the faith of these people, of their friends. And J Jesus seeing that, Jesus uh, claims divinity of forgiving sins, of which no human being can do. And that's why it brings the contrast. Because we only know that God can give what? Uh, uh, forgive sins. But we see Jesus forgiving the sin of this person. And the person is sick, the person hasn't spoken yet, but he forgives. So when we look this into context, Jesus knows that it is sin that deprives us of our well-being. Just the same way diseases also deprives us of our well-being. So when he talk of your sins are forgiven, it's just like you are freed. Because when you are freed from your inner part, your outer, like your physical body, is also free, when your soul is free. So Jesus is not only freeing his uh, uh, body, but also healing his soul, because Jesus' healing is awesome. Like, he heals everything. But now, there is something that uh, these people criticize him because of this. Because they don't understand what is the uh, purpose of the Sabbath. Like we said, these things were always happening on the Sabbath. They thought people should keep themselves away from sick people. They thought sick people are cursed. Yani, you are, you are filthy, you are unclean. We should only focus on we worship, but we do not know the true worship. Jesus is giving another uh, face of different thing of what they knew. The contrast now come when Jesus is now focusing on the well-being of others. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The first thing that I see in the story of this paralytic man is the faith. In verse 5, Jesus says that when, the Bible says that when Jesus saw the faith of the four men who brought him in, because you can see these people could not get in due to the crowd that was there. And they just went on top of the roof and they broke it and decided to lower this man down. So the Bible says that when, this, when Jesus saw the faith of these men, look at it. He saw the face of the four men, the faith of the four men, and then he healed the man. But before healing the man, he said, son, your sins have been done what? Have been forgiven. Meaning that Jesus is proving to those who are watching, and even to the sick person, that he is God. Because it's only God who can forgive sins. Number two, he proves that he is God because it is only God who can return someone into state of wholesomeness. Point number two, I see the man is healed and is taking his mat and walking away. For him, the Bible does not record that he started praising the Lord or he went announcing everything. Then the second step now, there are these Pharisees who are there. They started complaining and grumbling and saying that, who is this man? Who is this man? And in fact, the Bible says that they wanted, they wanted even to do what? To, to stone him. And then Jesus told the man, stand up, take your bedding and do what? And go. And then they said that they did not. These Pharisees, they have not seen a man who can do what? Who can forgive sin? What a controversy in the ministry of Jesus. Because people, the Pharisees, they thought that they knew God. And last week I said in John chapter 1 verse 10 that Jesus came to his own, but his own did not do what? Did not recognize him. So it is God in his church doing marvelous deeds, but the people of the church are not doing what? Are not recognizing. I and mean, in fact, they are even fighting to go and do what? To go and stone him. 
and that is where Jesus, the Bible, the Bible records that Jesus got lost amidst them. Controversy number two that I'm also seeing there is that these people, when you look at the book of Micah, Micah chapter 6, verse 6 to 8, the Bible tells us one thing, that you leave big things like doing good, but you measure so fast. Yani, the, the people of the world, the people of the church, the Biongozi Wadini, these, these religious leaders of those days, and even of today, they close their eyes to good things that are supposed to be done to those who are in need. But they look at big things. You see, now they are, they are trying to keep, to keep the commandments by saying that this man has blasphemed, he has claimed the place of God, but there are small, small things that they have done what? They have neglected. And that is what the book of Micah says, that these people, they neglect justice, they neglect righteousness. But they, but they claim to do what? To follow me. The second controversy that I also find here is that the same, same Jesus who has been accused of claiming the place of God is now coming to dine and to sit and to call the unclean. There's somebody called Levi. In Mark chapter 2 verse 13, this Levi Matthew who was a tax collector. I know people know about these tax collectors and how people were relating to them. One, a tax collector is someone, of those days, there were people who were given the contract to collect tax. And this contract was given unto them by the Roman Empire. So for them, it was like a business because they have been told, in your territory, we want this amount of tax. So when they go, they exert a lot of a, 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 an extra tax so that they can get what? They can get a profit on top of it. So these people were counted as sinners because they were overburdening people. And they were counted as those who were unclean before who? Before God. And Jesus chose to sit with this person and calls him. What can you say about this in relationship to in relation to our relationship with other Christians who we deem as sinners? Our relationship has been very poor. We are like Pharisees today. The way we look at others. And that's why Jesus is giving them a challenge. Mm that a doctor is not brought for those who are healthy. Mm. A doctor is brought for them that are sick. How many times have we gone to churches but we criticize people, we want to demonize people for their outfit, how they look, their actions. Somebody may be a drunkard. How do we relate with such people. Mm. Some people are church goers and they go church every day. But there is a neighbor, they don't talk to one on one. And they claim that they are good Christians. They don't want to associate themselves with sinners. If we are truly Christians, then we must take the heart of Jesus Christ. If we want to be with God, then we must have the character of God in us. The character of God that is majorly known is love, service to others. Why, why, why is it even important for God to create you? God could have created somebody else who is better than you. But his love has made you exist. So being that God is love, we should also exercise that. There is a time that you, somebody can sin in church, but how we want to demonize them, discourage them. But remember, this, this, this also brings controversy because in Hebrew, they knew anybody who associates themselves with the tax collector is, a, is unclean. He must be cleaned again, he must be uh, maybe sanctified in a way to be cleaned again. But Jesus is breaking this into a good face for people to see in another level. There is a way we must see as Christians, not just as the way we think that this is a sinner, we shouldn't relate with it. How are we going to take the word of God to the world if we cannot relate to them? Thank you very much, thank you very much. Jesus counters this by just saying one word. It is only the sick who needs the doctor. So those who think, those who deem themselves righteous, they don't need a savior. So the savior came to save sinners from the world so that he can bring them to God. And if you think 
as a Christian today that you are a Christian and you don't need Christ. Then there's no need of Christ coming to you. And that is why I want to say humbly that the church is full of sick people who needs the doctor, who is Christ, the master healer. And that is why we come to church. So when we come to church and we want to think that we are so righteous, then we don't even need, we don't even need that savior. And if you continue down there, there is still a complaint because this is the second controversy. The third controversy now, there's a complaint that these people, the, 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 the disciples of Jesus are not fasting while the disciples of John are doing what? Are fasting. And do you see what Jesus tells them? That do you think those, those who are, are in a wedding feast are supposed, to, are supposed to fast? Because he's saying that those who are in a wedding feast do not need to fast because the bride is with what? The bridegroom is with them. But there are days coming that the bridegroom will be removed from them and they will fast those, those days. So when Jesus talks about this in relation to what we just talked about in, in, in the story of Levi Matthew, is that the Bible is very explicit that there are times that we have to fast, but we fast when we are seeking the face of the who? Of the Savior. But when we have that face of the Savior, we don't need to fast. Amen. So when, the, when Christ has come into our lives and we have found him, we don't need to fast. Jesus is telling these people that the disciples of John are still seeking the master. In short, those disciples who are continuing to fast, they were just fasting because they have not known that the master, who is Christ, has come to the world. To the world. So the disciples of Jesus who have found Christ never needed to pray so much, to fast so much, because whatever they wanted, they could communicate. I want to relate this one to our Christian life by saying that even us, we fast when we seek the face of God. But when we find the face of God, we need to be what? We need to be happy. And that is why the book of Isaiah tells us that those who are fasting, they don't need to frown so much. They don't need to be so much clumsy. But they need also to put some oil. I think Jesus talked about this. They, they put some oil in their face so that their faces, their countenances can shine. Now, Jesus comes to the controversy that is like the, the major part of this lesson on a Sabbath day. This week has come, and it's on a Sabbath day. Jesus is continuing the ministry. And even on this Sabbath day, I think these people went to a Sabbath somewhere in nature, and now they are walking back. My friend, the disciples were very hungry. And then they decided to take some wheat, some wheat blades, and started eating because of the problem of what? Of hunger. And you see, what, what, what mesmerized me a lot in the lesson is that these people, I don't know how the Pharisees and the teachers of law were following the disciples of Jesus because every time, wherever they are, there must be someone who is complaining. And when they took these blades, the corn blades, and started eating, there were people who were ready to do what? To accuse them by saying that these people are doing work on a what? on a Sabbath day. Can you tell us how Jesus countered this and how we can relate to the Sabbath? So the Sabbath, the Lord of the Sabbath is our Jesus Christ. But remember, we read that, uh, let me just read it so that, and he said unto them that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Mm. Therefore, the son of man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Mm. Let me talk of the controversy in two different phases. There is a way it has been changed that the world sees it, that because it was made for man, mm -hmm. we need not the Sabbath again. Mm -hmm. But that's not the point Jesus was putting. It was made for man to mean it was to be beneficial to the humankind. Not that it was made for man, for it to be useless. You know, some churches say, say because it, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for Sabbath, now we shouldn't obey Sabbath as much. Yeah. But I want us to understand this point. Jesus is not talking on that to disgrace the Sabbath. Jesus is trying to give Sabbath its full meaning. Because Sabbath is made for man to be a beneficial thing. Remember, you working for six days, then the seventh day you, you rest. Resting is healthy for everyone. But Jesus is now giving it a deeper meaning because he's not now talking for physical rest only, but he's also talking 
of a rest that is making the, the whole body well. Remember, he's even healing on the Sabbath. Mm. And he's giving a, a, a chance. I mean, the disciples were not to hit, but they're hitting. They're plucking and hitting. And that's why he gives the account of David going to the, uh, the priest and the priest giving David, if you read First Samuel. Uh, so you see this, Jesus is trying to tell us that we should be using the Sabbath. In contrary to what Pharisees think, that we should be using the body, we should uh, uh, make the body suffer for the sake of the Sabbath. Make just your body suffer, you fast, you do what. But Jesus is saying we should use the Sabbath to better our, uh, our health, to better our souls, and always to bring relief, relief for humankind. Thank you yeah. very much. Sabbath was made for man. In Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 20, 13, verse 20, I want to believe that it is that. If it is not that, then I will check that verse. It says that the Sabbath is a sign between us and God. And it, it is a proof that God has what? Has chosen and sanctified us. When I was trying to check the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13, then it's also saying that if you keep the Sabbath, Sabbath holy, without doing everything that you are supposed to do, and without doing what you only think about, then you make that day a day of delight. Sabbath is a day that is supposed to be a day of happiness. And there's no need of sleeping there without food. That's a Sabbath day. It is not, it's not a day when you have to frown so much because it's a Sabbath day and people have to be serious. But Jesus is bringing another aspect of the Sabbath that one, Sabbath is made for man, not man for the what? For the Sabbath. Meaning that man should not be the slave on a Sabbath day. Man should not walk on a Sabbath day as if the Sabbath is a burden to him. That is one part of it. The other aspect that I want to come out so much, that it is the Sabbath that you should give us happiness, not us to give Sabbath its meaning. It is Sabbath that is supposed to give us the meaning of life. Because when God created, God brought the Sabbath into the picture by saying that he rested, he sanctified it, and hallowed it, and made it holy, so that men could do what? Could rest. And even in the Ten Commandments, God comes and says, remember the Sabbath day. So we are to remember the ordinance that God himself had done what? Had started for the benefit of us. Those of us who work six days, it is beautiful, and it is well it has a meaning to our lives when we find ourselves on a Sabbath day resting and communing with our what? With our Creator. And he culminates everything by saying that even Christ, the Son of Man, is the Lord of the what? Of the Sabbath. Meaning that God controls the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And he says, Lord of the Sabbath also. Meaning the way he is our Lord, is also the Lord of the Sabbath. So whoever is under the Lordship of Christ should enter where the Sabbath of God where is, so that we rest with him and we make that day a day of life. Viewers, I want to say that let us not take ourselves to be the controllers of the Sabbath by choosing our own days, by choosing our own ways of keeping it, but let us always have Christ in the center of the way we keep the Sabbath and the way we walk on the Sabbath day. After all these controversies, my, my friend, we find Jesus entering the most serious controversy in his ministry. And I want to believe that one is in the book of the book of Mark, chapter 3, verse 20. And he says that Jesus went into the house, and many people, the multitude, came to him. And when they started, when Jesus started teaching them, People were so many that they could not do what? They could not eat. That is 3 verse 20. He could not eat. Mm. And then his brothers, his brothers now, the blood brothers, I want to say blood brothers because they, are, they were the sons of Joseph. Mm. They came and they were looking for him. And when they were looking for him, they said that they wanted him because they thought 
that Jesus had turned mad. Do you think there are sometimes we can face controversies in our families yeah. when we follow Christ? Yeah. And how do we relate to that? The, the reason we face controversy is because people do not understand the will of God. There is a way God wants you to do. And then there is a way your brothers and sisters want you to do. For example, you are expected to be in every family meetings, whether it is on a Sabbath or not. Mm. So they think that family meetings are very important, that when they give a call unto it, you should abandon everything, whether you, you are on a Sabbath or not. But the will of God is sometimes contrary to the will of human beings. Yes. And that's why they thought that when they say, you are, your mother and your brothers are calling you, Jesus will just come out and say, oh, where are they? Family first. That's how they think the, Jesus will relate. But Jesus says, my brothers and my sisters are those who listen to the will of God. Wow. So he points us to the will of God. There are times uh, that the family pushes us to the world. You can even be told you should ma the, 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 the marriage should, uh, can only occur when you marry from the same tribe. Those are some of the controversies we also meet mm. as Christians. You can also be told in family, uh, we have our denomination mm. and it is this and this. When you know the truth and you want to be out of it, they will say you are mad because you are not listening to the family. But brethren, let us be strong in faith. There are many times you will be called mad because of you choosing the will of God over the wishes of humankind. But let us know how Jesus challenged them. Uh, Jesus says that those who are my sisters and brothers are those who follow the will of God. So let us also be brothers and sisters with those who follow the will of God so that your faith can be strong and you may inherit the kingdom of God. Thank you very much. Jesus is called by his brothers and he says that they say he's mad. And then... Jesus now, the mother now comes. I think when these brothers saw that Jesus could not come to, come to them, they, they went and called the mother, thinking that the mother, uh, there are people who have ideologies that mothers are so dear to their children that when they say anything, the children will do what? Will accept that this was, was not with Jesus. So when the mother of Jesus came and they stood outside and they said that, call for us, our son. That is what the Bible says in verse 31. And then, Jesus, Jesus told them, after the, he, was, he was called, it said that anyone who does the will of the Father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother and even my father. So Jesus said that the relatives, those who relate to him so much, are those who are doing the will of what? The will of the Father. And I want to, I want to challenge us as Christians. How many a times have we, have we forgone our ideologies as Christians in, for, for the sake of our families. How, how often do we leave the service of God because we are following the, the, the needs of our families? There are people who cannot go for a mission because they think that maybe their wives are so important. Their families come first. I see churches that have granted their people leave because of the families instead of going for a mission. A pastor could, cannot even come and preach because maybe their wife gave birth yesterday. So how many a times do we weigh God and our family, and then we take family first? And that, that is why Jesus says in the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 27, and he said that, verse 27 up to 29, he says that whoever has lived, I want just to paraphrase a, a smaller place there, because Peter came and asked him that for us who have left everything and followed you, what will we get? What did he say? He says that those who have left, that is verse 30, not verse 29. Those who have left brothers, sisters, and houses, and everything that they have, I will give them reward in the hundred times in this world and everlasting life in the world to do what? To come. So my brothers and sisters, Jesus came to give us everlasting life. If you choose your family, you may reap in this world. But if you choose to follow Christ, you will reap here and in the world to come. The last controversy that Jesus met now is the controversy that was questioning his ability and his authority to cast the devil, the, the, the demons. My friend, there are some times 
Christ can grant powers in his church. And you see people mocking the powers that Christ has granted in the church and they're saying, oh, that pastor is using, is using powers from underworld. Jesus was accused of the same thing. But I like what Jesus said. Jesus said like this, that when a kingdom is divided, it cannot stand. When a house is divided, it cannot do what? It cannot stand. And he asked them a question that, how can Satan remove himself? How can Satan cast away himself? And then he culminates everything by what I want you to talk about very little. In verse 31, he said, in verse 30, he said that though the, the, any, any, any blasphemy against the Father or the Son will be forgiven. But any blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven. Can you talk about that in just a minute so that we close? Brethren, it is true that there is sins that are unpardonable sins. But I want to give it another face on uh, how we see unpardonable sin. We say that when we call the work of the Spirit the work of the devil, then it is like we are abusing the Spirit of God. But then the question rises, maybe you've called that, uh, you've done the same thing. It, maybe it is me who has done the thing. Maybe it is you who is a victim. When you are afraid of, oh, is it me who has abused the Holy Spirit? Mm. And I think that the fear that you, you, you have, that uh, it may be that I have abused the Holy Spirit, seems as if God is still with you. So do not fear. So those who are never afraid of abusing the Holy Spirit, and I think those are the people who are committing the unpardonable sin. Those who have no fear, no fear of doing anything that is wrong. Please, brethren, change. Because you are doing a sin that will cause you for the rest of your life. Like you have said, that we sometimes can have reward in this world. But is it true that you are going to have reward on the other world? So I want to end by saying, it is not more about this world. There is something greater than what we can get. This world is limited with its riches. Even when you spend time and days not sleeping, searching for the riches, whether you deny God or you accept God, but there is something greater than this world. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, it says that if you continue sinning, after having received the grace of God, then there is no sacrifice that will pardon our what? Our sins. I want to say that the Spirit of God is the Spirit that leads us into repentance. Mm -hmm. And often at times we sin and we neglect the, the chastening of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That is one unpardonable sin. These people, the Spirit of God was moving in, in, in between them. But they could say that the Spirit of God that is working there is the power of Satan. So after turning their backs on the Holy Spirit, Jesus said that that one is unpardonable. Because when God the Father called the world through the prophets, he knew that there are still other chances. And that is why when they refused the prophets, he brought his own son, that is Christ. When they refused Christ, God knew that the third, that is the helper in the Godhead, that is who? That is the Holy Spirit will come. Mm. After you have refused the Holy Spirit, then there is no any other person that is coming to bring you back to God. Brothers and sisters, I want to say that Jesus, the master teacher, brought to this world a new life, a new light that was in contrast to the teachings of the world. And this is why the life of Jesus during these days had a lot of controversies mm -hmm. when he met those who purported themselves to know more about God, but they did not do what? They did not know. So even today, the teachings of Jesus are the teachings that must counter our ideologies and bring us out of the cocoons where we are now hiding so that we can stand in the light to receive the master teacher when he does what? When he does, when he does come. During these last days, God is speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. And when we refuse the chastening of the Holy Spirit, then it means that Christ will come and find us where we are. That is why he's saying in the chapter 22, uh, verse 20, verse 18, that whoever is clean, let him remain what? Let him remain clean. Whoever is unholy, let him remain unholy. Whoever is unjust, let, see, let him do what? Remain unjust. Meaning that the door of mercy shall have been closed at that time. How I pray 
that we leave the controversies that we are and we focus ourselves on Jesus himself and the kingdom that he has brought unto us so that these controversies, the great controversy that we are fighting on, we have to take the side of Christ. When he comes, he finds us ready to receive him in his kingdom. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you once again because you've granted us a chance to study your word. It is my humble plea that amidst all the controversies that we receive in your precepts and even in our school of thoughts may be brought subject to your will so that at the end of this work, Lord, we may just follow you and focus on what you brought for us that is everlasting life. Be with each and every listener. And there's someone who is listening to this lesson, Lord, and wherever he is, he has a challenge in his life, maybe sickness or he has a need somewhere. May you touch that person a special point of his need. Bless us as a church. Bless us as your people. Bless us even as a country. And above all, remember us when you come with your kingdom. For this humble prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. <clears throat>